Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Wednesday, October 31st, 2018 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is power is within me, my responsibility. And happy Halloween, happy sewing. And I'm going to kick this off by showing you two of my cards that I have because I think they're really indicative of these energies that we're working with. We have the Thunderbolt card. And as we have this grand fixed cross or grand fixed square, we are getting moved out of a stuck position and we are being, we are being shifted. Um, the beautiful thing is this card comes right with the rebirth card. My guess is with these energies, our ego today, this really represents the ego. See these thunderbolts coming from the head, these people falling down. My feeling is our ego is going to be a little bit tested in the morning, um, but we have a chance as we connect to our heart and our innocence to be reborn in a new level of power. Power is within you, your personal responsibility. How are you going to respond to whatever the trigger is? Now, chances are this trigger is going to be one of relationship. A lot of times when we say relationship, you, we think, okay, it's relationship as in romantic relationship, and it could be that. Or it could be the relationship you have with your parents. It could be the relationship you have with your siblings. It could be the relationship you have with your coworkers, your friends, your neighbors. Um, it also could be the relationship that you have with yourself and or the relationship that you have with the universe. There's a lot of opportunity for a relationship to trigger you. The key is in this energy is that this is meant to trigger you, whatever it is, out of the ego, out of this place where you could fall apart and into the strength of your innocence. We have the peak of Venus opposite Uranus. They are both at zero degrees. Venus retrograde in Scorpio, Uranus retrograde in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus bringing up the worth stuff, bringing up the production stuff. Venus also tuning us into the worth stuff. Venus in Scorpio tuning us into some of those shadows, shadows in ourselves, shadows in relationship, shadows we have in boundaries, shadows we have in not creating boundaries. There's a lot of energy that's potentially wrapped up in this. What is also intensifying it and making it this fixed square cross energy squares you know that's the resistance cross tug of war energy is the nodes we still have these nodes hanging out at zero degrees south node uh south node in aquarius asking us to draw upon what we have learned from being in community a lot of times when you work in community it isn't through focus on the ego that things really work out North Node in Leo. Now, North Node in Leo is very interesting. Ultimately, what we want with North Node in Leo is to listen to our heart. But North Node in Leo can stimulate that ego. So we've got the shadows coming in, some word stuff coming in. Um, and then we have this ego, which is like, am I going to delve into this place, which is going to make me fall apart? Or am I going to respond through my innocence into my next highest level, into this rebirth of my innocent, true self? possibilities are out there and it is up to you how you are going to respond to this energy. Now right before I recorded this I literally just said to a friend be compassionate to your fear it's just trying to keep you alive. Fears and your ego that come up today be compassionate to those places within yourself. Chances are they are the boundary or the bandage on some wound or trauma that is in there that needs to be tended to. When you have fear come up, that's not the place to attack yourself. And it's the same thing with ego. Sometimes we will shame the ego, but a lot of times it is just trying for its agenda <laughs> for the best for you. And its agenda is usually aligned with societies. What we want to align with is the soul agenda, our truest path. And so we have this opportunity to align through these energies and through connecting with the heart. Will it be easy? Chances are no. <laughs> you know, these lessons, they really push us. They are not often easy. Just be aware. If you start feeling this, notice, where am I choosing fear? Where am I choosing ego? Where can I be in my heart? Where can I be in my light? Where can I be in my innocence? And how can I bring this energy to whatever is falling apart? All right. So the next thing that we are looking at, oh, intense energies, is Mercury in conjunct Uranus. Anytime Mercury and Uranus come together, technology can get a little bit crazy. We are also, also in um, 
Mercury shadow period before retrograde. We are in Uranus retrograde. So technology can be a little extra haywire. Be good to your nervous system. Now the thing with this, and again, this could be part of what stimulates this whole thing. It's funny. Um, Sagittarius has the, rest, uh, the reputation for being blunt and putting their foot in their mouth. But I would say, <laughs> if there is a sign that could rival Sagittarius in regards to bluntness, it would be Taurus. <laughs> so between this connection of Mercury and Sagittarius, foots in mouths, feet in mouths, all over the place, and Uranus stimulating the word stuff in Taurus, which could lead to a little blunt outburst, really be very conscious and aware about what you are saying. I always like the three gates. Is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? I love adding a few more gates. Is this for me or is this for somebody else? Because sometimes we get information and it's really, they're not ready for it. It's really for you to have understanding. So be very aware of that in and through that, in that in conjunct. I also feel like if we can allow, there's some amazing, um, insights coming in and it's not an insight that you are going to be getting at the nearest book by reading a book it is insight that's going to come through electrical stimulation not lightning but just like kind of download so pay attention to the ahas that come through and i feel like again the more you can get out of your ego and into your innocence it leaves room for the ahas coming through next connection that we have going on <coughs> Um, sun, square the moon. Now, let me say again, the good news is all of these things that I'm talking about are happening very, very, very early in the morning and the next connections happen in the afternoon. So it's like two parts to the day. So we get the tough stuff over with so then we can have fun in the evening. Sun, square the moon. Sun is in Scorpio. Sun in Scorpio wants to do the work. It wants to get down to business. It's willing to go into the shadows. The moon is like, oh my God, am I bright enough to hold the light for the shadows? Yes, you must rely on your love to hold space through any of these shadows. That moon in Leo might be like, I want to have fun. I don't want to go there. Go there so you can be in the full fun energy that is coming. So go there. Be willing to go there. It's going to be like, ah, ah. What does it feel like? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess like it's kind of like the feeling of pulling out a splinter. The splinter in there, like it like kind of hurts. It hurts when you kind of pull it out and you pull it out and you're like, oh, relief. Okay, I got the splinter out. That's kind of what this day is like. Get the splinter out. Get that over with. Um, next thing that we have happening. Venus is shifting back into Libra. 29 degrees Libra. Now I love this because like there's all this, you know, relationship dynamic happening and I feel like the Venus shifting, even though that is at 29 degrees, master level degree, healing degree, sometimes a tested degree, I do feel that's going to be a little bit of relief. Kind of like balance is restored. It may be temporary <laughs> because we still have work to do. The nodes are going to shift. Uranus is going to shift. Venus is going to go direct. We're going to be in this kind of square in different elements very soon. So we're still going to be working it. But this to me is like, okay, we've leveled off. We have found a way to work together. Do not compromise yourself in order to do this. Be true to your heart. But we find our equilibrium. So that's going to be nice. That shift happens at 1242. I will go deeper into Venus moving through Libra for the next week about, um, or retrograde through Libra for the next week about more in the upcoming videos. But for now, it's like, okay, equilibrium. To me, just to say something, this is again about finding the relationship and the harmony between your head and your heart. This is so much of this work of Libra, between your head and your heart and your inner yin and yang. Find the balance in there, especially if you're feeling out of balance in relationships outside of yourself. Last two things to mention. That's it. That's it for the insane transits of the day. <laughs> so 12.42 p.m. Pacific time. That's like 3.42 p.m. Pacific Eastern time. So phew, done with that. Moon goes perigee. Moon perigee is interesting. That is the place in the orbit where the moon is closest to the earth. So the moon is close. The moon is bracing us with its presence. The moon is in Leo, bringing that inner child, bringing the fun, bringing the joy. You're going to have the inner child feels. Hopefully, again, if you were able 
to pull the splinter out, you can get into that innocence. If not, you may have to feel some of those other feels. That's why I'm encouraging during the first part of the day, get that part done so you can really enjoy the creativity, the spirit of the evening, whether you're going out or not, like just at least put on some cat ears or something. Have fun, let your inner child uh, have a little revelry. Last thing that I wanna mention, on Thursday, <laughs> November 1st, the first connection is between the moon and Mars. The moon is gonna oppose Mars. Anytime moon and Mars come together, there can be a little bit of temper tantrum. So especially after coming off of candy high and all of this, be aware the next day of any temper tantrum potential in yourself, in your inner child, or in you know your child or student or whatever. So be very aware of that coming on November 1st. But for now, take care of your splinters and have fun. So that is it for today. You can always book a reading with me. Email me, mimiclark at gmail.com. My Jupiter reading, $33. It's a really good price for one of my readings. Um, I'm offering that as Jupiter is preparing to move into Sagittarius. Uh, email me for that. Besides that, the better it gets, the better it gets. There is enough love in the world for you, and you have the power. Power is within me, my responsibility. Namaste.